Dell Technologies world, and we thought we'd have some conversation. So my, my good friend, Sam Ramji, who has done all kinds of things in his life, he's got a new adventure that I really, I, I thought was just fascinating. So I asked him to join us. They're kind of semi-stealth, coming out of stealth, startup company. But it, 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 it's such a great example of the, the art of the possible as we move into Agentic. And yeah. so uh, your company is Sailplane, maybe give me like the, the pitch on sales, Sailplane and then let's talk about kind of how you're doing this stuff. That's great, thank you so much. And uh, Sailplane is an operations engineer. Yeah. That's kind of a crazy claim. Yeah. But what we have is an Agentic system that can perform discrete operations tasks as well as or better than a human yeah. in about 1 50th as much time. So think about a job that takes 30 hours for your AI professionals to configure a new NVIDIA cluster to be able to get their old systems running on the new thing. They have to have advanced knowledge, but there's a lot of legwork. What we've had the opportunity to do with actually your AI engineering group is to reduce that to 30 minutes. Yeah. So it's hours to minutes kinds of compression. So we're taking human intelligence, combining that with logical planning, with reasoning, and able to take up all the knowledge of how do you do symbolic systems, how do you do things that are verifiably correct, and then to produce those kinds of environments, hopefully saving developers and AI engineers years of their lives right. and you know, delivering happiness. When you showed me like the first like production demo of this yeah. thing, because yeah, we had talked about it for a while, and I was in your, in your office and out in California and brought up the system, and. And the use case, which was just fascinating, was, okay, we just want to move this virtual private cloud from this public cloud to this public cloud. Yeah. And you know, it sounds like a simple thing to do, except a VPC is a very complex collection of stuff. And the fascinating thing about it was, you know, it was not a technical exercise. It was literally a natural language talking to an AI system and giving it a set of instructions to say, I would like you to do this, and yeah. here are some parameters around it. And then off it went, but, it, but maybe, what was interesting is that it wasn't like a script, it was an interaction. It asked questions about, yes. oh, I didn't define OAuth properly, or I didn't yes. give you this information. Um, to me, that is a great example of an agentic system, but you know, help people understand kind of, you know, what's underneath that? You know, yeah. like, yeah, that's the experience you showed me, but what was the tech stack to do that, and how did that accom get accomplished? It's a great question. I mean, the tech stack, in a nutshell, is TypeScript, a bunch of stuff that we can support in VS Code so that yeah. you have a, a nice idiomatic place to be able to do your iteration. Yeah. Right? Developers expect, the technical people expect, you can do everything from Markdown yeah. all the way to you know, YAML or any kind of arbitrary programming language in that environment. A Bunch of Elixir, but most importantly, we have Google Brain alumni yeah. right? and continuous learning postdocs as part of our core team. Yeah. So what we try to do is to use all this stuff really effectively to do two things. First, understand you and show you that we understand you. We call it looping for understanding. Yeah. Another great way to describe it is elicitation. Yeah. When you first ask for something to an employee, yeah. do you really know what you want? Right. Almost never. <laughs> so this opportunity to have a dialogue that goes back and forth makes you smarter about what you want, makes the agent smarter about what they want. The second thing is, once you've exposed that plan back to the human and they're like, yeah, that looks really good, go off and do it and be able to come back for help. Right. So the sense of having the genie out of the bottle but still under your control right. is essential. So there's an experience that you described that's all enabled by a set of heuristics and algorithms that allow you to take frontier models. Right. So we can do this on OpenAI, we can do this on Claude, we can do it on Gemini, we can do it on also on-premises models for air gap systems. Yeah. So as you go through using these what is now common available language models to assemble that into a cognitive architecture that supports you in this class of infrastructure tasks. That's really interesting stuff. You were, you were the first agentic system that I interacted with that had that elicitation yeah. experience. And I, I didn't really, I mean I knew what was going on but it was interesting, it was, this, it was like a Q and A with the agent trying to just clarify things. Yeah before it did things or as it was doing them. And, I, and that, you know, this was, we actually had this conversation, it was a while, months and months ago. And, and from then, as we've kind of seen acceleration of the agentic world, even in our own internal development, we've seen that behavior more and more become valuable. This idea that, you know, agents are not a script. Agents are not static. Agents are interactive. They are 
capable of knowing what they know and what they don't know, yes. and they want to fill in the gaps, and they realize that the way you do that is not by reprogramming them, but by them interacting with the human who told them what to do and might have that information. And so, yeah. so it's, you know, it does seem you were kind of early and probably right about this, and, and I, think it, I don't think you could do it without it, because there's so much variability in these things that without that kind of human-machine interaction, yeah. you're just going to get it wrong and then have to rerun it 38,000 times, which is probably not very efficient. Now, one of the things that you've done is to pull a whole bunch of us together into a agent interworking council. Now this is really interesting because what's gonna make this stuff go to 11 is when mostly people don't need to interact with the whole agentic system. Exactly. What if you could loop for understanding and have multiple agents with their own specialties from different vendors yep. taking care of whatever it is that your right. command set up. Yeah. So A to A, ACP, those are super interesting. So hold that thought on yeah. elicitation and looping for understanding. How's that going to work right. when it's agents oh, looping yeah. for understanding with agents? Well, I, it's good that you recognize. I mean, we, we, we think one of the biggest contributions we collectively are having by getting together as a tech industry is we've accelerated this path to interworking at a speed that I didn't think we could do. And, and I think we're dangerously close to having consensus around certain dimensions of interworking, which yeah. you're absolutely right. You know, agents are great in isolation, but it's like saying I have one person in a, in a vacuum, what can they accomplish? Well, it's probably something. But if yeah, I had 100,000 people doing stuff together, that's just better. And, yeah. and if you don't know the language or the trust models to do that. So, so I, yeah, I think that, you know, this is a fantastic journey. I mean, you guys are doing frontier work in this space, but it also is kind of demonstrating to people the art of the possible here and super exciting stuff between Dell and you. And, and, and then yeah, I appreciate the, the partnership with you and, and all of these tech companies of yeah. us kind of taking the lead as a, as a group to just get something done, like let's define interworking. So we're, we're uh, you know, out of time, but uh, honestly, Sam, thanks, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for uh, being our, our, our friend and partner and we've got a lot more in front of us, uh, but I think we're at like the very beginning of a very interesting decade uh, that is really gonna be characterized by this evolution of moving work into machines and doing it in levels of autonomy we've never done before. Sam, sure. thanks very much, sure. great to see you. Absolutely. Thank you so much.